Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zagabane101 and this is how to get the Gravelord Sword and the Rite of Kindling within the first 10 minutes of Dark Souls, more or less. At the beginning of Dark Souls you need to create a character. You will choose from two different characters, the Warrior or the Bandit. This is because they are closest to level 16 in strength. And you only get three levels after you finish the Asylum. So we'll pick the Warrior because it's a little bit more challenging. After starting the game, we'll run through the normal run through of the Asylum. Except for we can skip most of the enemies. You only need to kill, I would say, around seven enemies in total. That's including the boss. The Asylum Demon drops down, but that's okay. We just run right past him. We can totally ignore the enemy with the bow. We'll go past him through the fog, activate the ball, kill that guy, get his items for the SS Fuss and the key to leave the area, kill the guy going towards the door, kill the three enemies that are right in front of the boss fog, and then kill the guy that is armored. Now all we have to do is take out the Asylum Demon and we'll have enough experience to be able to level up to 16 strength. After defeating the Asylum Demon, we'll head up the hill and be taken by the bird to Lordron. Once in Lordron, we'll be able to gain access to our first bonfire at Firelink Shrine. We'll grab this bonfire and quickly level up our character to level strength 16. By doing so, this will allow us to equip the Gravelord Sword in both hands. However, you will not be able to use it in just one. But let's go obtain our first item, the Gravelord Sword. The route I like to take is go up past the priest, go under the elevator, and head straight towards the area where he can grab the homeward bones. These are extremely useful for they allow you to get out of the area in case you got extra experience points that you'll possibly want to hold on to when you want to warp back to Firelink Shrine. We'll head through the graveyard and go straight towards the catacombs which is on the left side where the staircase is. Once we will know when we're in the catacombs when the sign pops up or when you see this long dark and moody staircase heading straight to the depths of the world now all we have to do is make our way down these stairs try and evade that guy but don't because apparently we like to get hit by enemies and we'll head down towards the area we need to go to as long as you stay away from the skeletons you should be 100 percent fine and not get hurt however i'm a horrible player and i get hit quite frequently so here's what not to do don't die, because that always sucks. Anywho, now we can just try again, because that's what this game allows us to do. So running through the catacombs, you just need to dodge out of this way, and make sure you keep your shield up. If you hold your shield up while you are sprinting, you will be able to dodge just as you were if you were not sprinting. This will stop you from doing jump rolls. Also be sure not to expend all your stamina, because you'll need to roll in certain situations. Now here we got hit by the Pyromancer, unfortunately that was just our fault, uh, but if you activate the switch you are immune to his damage. So now we open up a door and all we have to do is get past all these skeletons. Or not. Looks like we died again. Well that's the second death in our playthrough. And a more experienced player would be able to do this all in just one go. So I'm showing you that you can fail quite frequently and you can still get the item that you need. We'll run through the same route again and we'll go past the door that we just opened. Now be very careful and make sure you don't expend all your stamina here. You need to make sure you have maximum stamina while you're sprinting and then you'll be able to dodge roll past all of these skeletons here. Roll through the clay pots on the left or else you will get stuck and get hit by those guys even though I still did. We'll jump off the side here before the boss fog and move forward through the tunnel and we'll meet a Titanite demon off in the distance there. We'll go around this corner just so we can heal up and make sure none of the skeletons are still following us. Luckily, none of them are. So we'll run towards the Titanite Demon. Now we don't need to fight the Titanite Demon to get the Gravelord Sword. However, we need to go behind the Titanite Demon to be able to grab the Eyes of Death. This will allow us to access the Needle Boss Room, which contains the Gravelord Sword. So we'll grab those items after carefully dodging some of the Titanite Demon's attacks and run into this little tomb here. After a bit of time, a cutscene will activate and you will be pulled into the Needle Boss Room. Here is that cutscene.
After entering the boss room of Nido, all we have to do is head straight to his tomb. After heading to his tomb, you will be able to enter the Gravelord Covenant. Note that I take off the rest of my armor, because I won't be able to fast roll with the sword in my hands if I'm wearing any other armor, including my shield. After entering the Covenant, you'll get the miracle Gravelord Sword Dance with the Gravelord Sword. So now you have successfully gotten possibly one of the most powerful items to get early on in the game. So if you're going for a dex build, this weapon will severely help you out for doing 265 damage. Yeah, that's right. 265 damage and it is scaling with dexterity and strength. Now they may be an E rating, but it is still a very, very good weapon to use early on in the game. You can even kill the poison dragon within the Valley of the Drakes and get yourself 3000 experience. Don't believe me? Well, go check out Vegeta311's channel and watch his series called Everything Possible Before the Twin Gargoyles. Anywho, let's go get item number two, the Rite of Kindling. The Rite of Kindling allows you to kindle your bonfires up to three times, which will allow your bonfires to give you, in fact, 20 SS flasks at once. This will severely help out your playthrough if you are dying in certain situations. Just keep in mind that you do have to give the uh, bonfire more than one humanity to upgrade it. Anywho, we will head out the same way we came in, exiting the tunnel and making a left turn, dropping off at this point. Dropping off at this point, we'll be able to go ahead and pick up the large soul of the Nameless Soldier, we'll heal up, and we'll have to be very careful about this jump, and run. Now, there's going to be some spinning skeletons, which are extremely dangerous, just make sure to try and dodge them while sprinting, holding up your shield to allow you to roll while sprinting, head through the boss fog, and now we'll be able to fight Pinwheel. Now, Pinwheel is the boss that drops the Rite of Kindling. He's a very easy boss, but if you don't know his abilities, then you could die very easily. So, we'll drop down into the Pinwheel boss fight and take him on. As you can see, Pinwheel is a cloning boss. He actually summons other parts of himself or illusions of himself that still do damage. The one that you're looking for is the dark black colored clothed Pinwheel, the one that is darker than the other illusions. However, if you do hit the other illusions, you will not do damage to Pinwheel, but you will remove the real illusion from the area. Just take out Pinwheel, you'll do a ton of damage with your two-handed hits, and he'll be no problem at all. And you'll defeat him with no problem. Now you have the Rite of Kindling, Humanity, and an extra Homeward Bone to get out of there in case you forgot your Homeward Bones. Now you can pick up his item, it could be one of three masks. We got the Mask of the Mother, which allows us to get more health. And that is everything that you need to know to get the Gravelord Sword and the Rite of Kindling. My name has been Akabane101. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click that like button, as well as check out my Dark Souls series, which shows you how to get through the game. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.